It's been five years since Sony introduced the RX10 Mark IV. Now, I'm pretty excited because I just heard a rumor today that there may, may be an RX10 Mark V by the end of this year. Now, why is this exciting? I mean, this is just a really a one inch sensor camera, all in one. It's a glorified point and shoot, right? It's not a full frame or an APS-C. So should we really be excited? And I say yes, because I reviewed the RX10 Mark IV earlier this year and reviewing it really got me to really experience it. And I was kind of surprised how much I enjoyed using it. So what do the rumors say exactly about the new RX10 Mark V? Well, it mentioned something about computational photography and artificial intelligence. So that's what cell phones use actually. Now you may say, well, why would I want this camera to be like a cell phone? But that computational photography in cell phones sometimes actually causes your cell phone pictures to look better than your mirrorless camera pictures because it handles the exposure and it uses an algorithm even more sophisticated than in our point and shoot cameras. So it may be interesting actually, I wouldn't dismiss it as, uh, as garbage. The rumor also mentions the removal of the pop-up flash. Now, I don't know about you, but this would kind of be disappointing. To me, I like the pop-up flash. It's annoying to have to carry a separate flash around and you never really know when you're gonna need a flash. To me, I use a flash more outdoors than indoors. Outdoors, you really need it to fill in light if you're in shadows. And to me, that's an advantage of having an all-in-one point-and-shoot camera. I hate calling it point-and-shoot because this is so much more than point-and-shoot, but let's just call it an all-in-one camera. I would like to see the, the flash stay in place. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. The rumor mentions it's a more juiced up Z-type battery. And boy, that would be a nice thing to have, wouldn't it? These batteries really don't last very long. Although that's a nice improvement, but not the most exciting. I mean, you can always carry around a few extra batteries. They're small enough, but still, if they increase the battery life, that would be nice. The rumor also mentions blackout free burst shooting up to 24 frames a second. And just so you know, the Mark IV also shoots in 24 frames a second. Now the rumor actually mentions that the lens in the camera will be the same as its predecessor. Hmm. Well, you know, if I had to wait five years for a new camera, I don't like anything that's the same. I want improvements across the board. So I guess I'd be disappointed if there was no improvements to the lens. But when you think about it, the lens really is the most incredible thing about the camera. A 24 to 600 millimeter Zeiss lens high quality, sharp throughout the frame, 2.4 to 4, it's almost like a miracle how they could do that. So if you wanted a lens that could do 600 millimeters at f4, what would you expect to spend? Uh-huh. To me, what really needs the most work is stabilization. Let's face it, when you're at a long zoom, especially in video mode, you wanna be able to hold the camera steady. And what I found with the RX10 Mark IV was that it really fell quite a bit behind in the stabilization department. It was more jittery and wasn't really floaty smooth like some other cameras, especially since this is a smaller sensor, you would think the stabilization is easier to stabilize a smaller sensor than a larger one. And when comparing it to a full frame camera, the newer technology really has gotten the stabilization to around five and a half stops. Compare this to the four and a half stops on the Mark IV. So what else would I like to see freshened up at an RX10 Mark V? Well, in Sony's latest crop of full frame cameras, they actually improved the color science. And that might be nice if they could do the same for the RX10 Mark V. How about a new sensor? And that new sensor would also help low light performance. Finally, a fully articulating screen would be nice. And let's get rid of that old Sony menu system with the updated menus now. What about the slow motion? Slow motion was a really big pain to use in the old RX10 Mark IV. See, I'm calling it old already, wishful thinking. But slow motion really had three frame rates. Only one of them, the 240, was any good. It was in HD. Uh, I would like to see better slow motion and a better way to implement the slow motion. You could only record a few seconds and then the camera would have to process it. So that would be nice if they could improve the slow motion. 4K 60, a lot of people would enjoy that. The RX10 Mark IV only goes out to 4K 30. So the big question is, we've waited five years for a replacement model for the RX10 Mark IV. Now, have we been waiting because 
the demand isn't there, that Sony is just concentrating now on the full frame market, the APS-C market, and sort of letting this drop down. We hear that the all-in-one bodies, the demand is really falling because of cell phones. Or are we waiting because of an unfortunate series of events in the world? We know about COVID and chip shortages. And maybe now that that's being alleviated a little bit, we'll finally see it. Let me remind you that in the full frame department, in the A7S III camera, that took five years to come out since the A7S II. People were giving up hope. Five years from the A7S II to the A7S III, maybe five years from the RX10 Mark IV to the RX10 Mark V, maybe that five years is a magic number. Hey, five years, RX10 Mark V. Maybe there's a silent majority of people out there who really feel that an all-in-one camera, which yields quality that, of course, is not going to be the same as a full-frame camera, but to the point where, you know what? It's fairly close, and you don't have to carry around all those lenses and have all that expense and all that weight, and you get the most incredible zoom combined with a great aperture. Wow, you know what? That silent majority, I think, is going to be very excited about an RX10 Mark V. I know I am. So, two questions. Would you get an RX10 Mark V if you don't have an RX10 Mark IV? And the bigger question, if you already do have an RX10 Mark IV, would you get an RX10 Mark V? And what would you need to see to upgrade? Let me know in the comment section. And you know what? Subscribe because I'm going to stay on top of this and we'll let you know if I hear anything else and we'll be sure to review the RX10 Mark V if and when it comes out. Be sure to check out my RX10 Mark IV review. And to be honest with you, even if the 5 doesn't come out, this camera really can stand on its own, even today in 2022. I think it really looks great. The picture quality is amazing. The features are amazing. And for travel, wow. Street photography, travel. Thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.